Hi all, how are you? I am good, thank you for asking. If you are coming back to my channel, I thank you for revisiting and putting up with me for a little longer. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessie and I make all kinds of videos about mom stuff and kid stuff and family stuff and homeschooling stuff and being a law enforcement officer's wife stuff. So if that interests you, please stick around. Today's video is the first of a couple and they're going to be kind of a series of so you're married to law enforcement. But you don't have to be married. You could be the girlfriend or boyfriend, but I'm talking from the female stance. So if you can get past that, you'll be great. You can be the girlfriend, the boyfriend, the husband, the wife, the brother, the sister, the mom, the dad, you know, whatever. Just that someone very close to you, my husband, to me, is law enforcement. And I just want to put these out there because maybe you're new to the career, maybe you're marrying into the career, maybe you're already married and they've decided they want to try out for the career, or maybe you are a seasoned wife or significant other or family member and you need some encouragement. Maybe that's it. So from now on I'm just gonna talk as the wife and then you fill in, change it to whatever you are. But I'm speaking from my experience as a law enforcement wife of six years this year, I believe. Six? No, this will be our seventh year. So I'm, I'm a little, you know, I've got some experience that I wanted to share kind of how to cope with a couple things. So this video is going to be, and I made my list because, you know, I ramble and I'm still going to ramble with the list. I'm going to try really to stay on topic. But let's talk about their hours. Law enforcement hours suck. You either work a 10 hour, 11 hour, 12 hour shift and a lot of times those turn into 12, 14, 16 hour, maybe you won't see them for 24 hours shifts. And I just want to prepare you for that, that that's what happens. Let's see, day shift is long. When we worked day shift in our old department, and I'm speaking more of my old, our old department because John just got off FT on his new apartment and I'm not quite seasoned in their um, shifts yet. So I'm talking about when John worked for the sheriff's office is what I'm talking about. Um, he worked, they started out as 12 hour shifts and then they went to 11 hour shifts. So he would work 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. or, you know, 5 a.m. to 4 p.m., you know, 11 hour shifts. But if you got a call five minutes before you are supposed to call off, you could be there for another two hours, four hours, you get an arrest, you get a drug bust, you know, whatever. And you're there for that many hours. Also, that can happen on night shift. Night shift is usually from dinner time to early in the morning and they could be called in. They could have a call right at, you know, like 2.50 when they're supposed to be off at three. And then you won't see them until six or seven in the morning. That's normal. And I want to communicate to you that they're not ignoring you or not coming home on purpose. They can't help it. They don't get a choice. When a call for a missing kid or when a call for a wreck or when a call for a domestic violence, somebody's beaten on somebody, comes in 10 minutes before they're supposed to call off shift, they can't say, oh, you got this, I'm, I'm, I'm out. They can't, it's just, it's not. They can't do that and um, most likely the next shift has not come in yet we went through that a lot where people get there right right on time so there's no one there you know 10 minutes early to take it so don't take it personally when they have to work late also don't take it personally when dispatch calls them and asks them to come in because someone called out sick or we need extra hands for this or that that unfortunately is also a sad reality is not every police officer is gung-ho to go to work on their day off so they just won't answer the phone and then your husband loves serving so he does and he gets called in a lot that will happen that is something you guys need to come to agreement compromise on and you know figure it out day shift I just that's kind of what I wanted to 
communicate was the they're going to be home late and they can't help it. They're going to get called in on their day days off and most of the time they can't help it. So please do not hold that against them. Do not let that become a rut in your marriage like I did. I used to get so mad at that. And he can't help it. And so I'm mad at him for something that he can't control and it was just horrible. And I don't know when I finally got over it, but I finally did. And now it's peaceful. Like, we have this thing where if he's going to be late, if he can spare two seconds to send me a text, he'll just send me a text. Late. Or going to be late. And then I'm a little bit prepared. But I kind of got used to, you know, not expecting him home. And if they do come home on time, it's a nice surprise. Day shift is long because it's longer than banker's hours. You either either gone before you get up or... Um, you know, they're gone until past dinner time or something like that and you are stuck doing all the kids stuff. Like I said, texting, do not take it personally when you text them and they don't text you back within a couple hours or even at all. Some days they are just so busy, especially if you work for like a sheriff's office or a city department that they're just call after call after call after call. Don't don't he can't help it and sometimes they don't even have eat time to eat let alone pick up their phone and if they're around their supervisors a lot and their supervisors don't want them on their phones you don't get to text them and they don't get to text back John was not allowed to text during his training and so I really got used to only texting him once in a while if it was important and then not hearing back from him until he was off and that was normal. Sometimes they can call you for a little chat. Most of the time I text John and say, hey, I need you to talk to the kids. And so he'll call for a couple minutes and kind of be like, please listen to your mother. Don't drive her too crazy. We'll deal with this when I get home kind of thing. And depending on your department, they might or might not be able to come home for lunch, but that is definitely department based and how far they work. My husband works in a very large county right now, so there will be days when he's very far away from home and won't be able to come home for lunch. So sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Don't take any of it personally. And remember that if you text them or you call them and you do not get a call back within a couple hours or even at all during the whole day, it doesn't mean that something's wrong. If your significant other husband is injured or anything worse than that, you will know within a reasonable amount of time and it will probably be his superiors that get a hold of you. So don't assume that just because he's not personally answering means something is wrong. Night shift is hard because it's long also. I hate it when it starts right before dinner time because I'm trying to get John out the door and I'm trying to get dinner ready and then you have to do bedtime by yourself. I just, that's what I don't like about night night shift is dinner time and bedtime by myself. But then once the kids are in bed, I'm like, yeah, because I'm totally a night owl. And if John's not here to tell me to go to sleep, I won't. And I'll stay up until the wee hours of the morning and then hate myself because I have to get up with the kids and I'm exhausted the next day. So if you're a night owl, night shift might work for you, but uh, it all is also hard because if you work, you might be working opposite schedules and only see each other a couple minutes a day. And you just, when it comes to that, you need to just make, you know, schedule out some time when you're both off that you need to spend with each other and on each other because that is hard to be on opposite schedules would be horrible I think and also when it comes to night shift putting the kids to bed we have not started any kind of call daddy and say goodnight text daddy and say goodnight kind of things they say goodbye when he leaves and then they know mom is in charge mom is doing dinner mom is doing bedtime and we'll see daddy tomorrow when he gets up I just I didn't want to start the habit of sure daddy gets home at 10 we can all stay up until 10 to see him if that works for you, that's great, but that would drive me crazy because 
the time between my kids going to bed and John coming home is the only time I get of quiet and alone. Also, we don't do the texting daddy or calling daddy because he might be on a call. And if he doesn't text or call back, you now have a child that doesn't understand why daddy's not talking to them. And I just, I didn't want to start those habits. So they say goodbye, they give their hugs and kisses before he leaves for work, and that is the end of it. And it makes it so much easier. And then he gets to do bedtime on his nights off. <laughs> also, if they work night shift, sometimes they can also come home for lunch. Like John, when he was working night shift at the sheriff's office, would come home for lunch at about 10 or 11 o'clock at night sometimes. And of course, I'm still up. So I got to see him for a little bit. But again, that depends on your department and that depends on where you live versus where they're working opposite side of the county or something. Here it is. I kind of touched on this already, but over time is my last point I have on here. And it says pay versus no pay. And pretty much what that means is like our old, sh our sheriff's office where we were would not pay you overtime. They paid you in comp time, compensation, I guess, time. And what that is, is instead of giving you this time on your paycheck, we're just gonna give you this time off, which is nice, but when you have bills to pay, time off does not cover the bills, you need it in the paycheck. And that is all that our sheriff's department did up to a certain amount of hours and then they had to pay you overtime, but they really kept you from getting to those overtime hours and you just got comp time all the time. Get used to, please, don't hold birthdays and holidays very sacred anymore. At least we don't. We, you know, see like, oh, Ty's birthday is on this day and John works. Well, we can kind of celebrate that day, but we can have a party on this day when John's off. Or we do that for birthdays. Um, for holidays, like Christmas or Easter or Thanksgiving or anything like that that we celebrate, we usually reschedule. <laughs> Like, if he works Christmas but he's off two days after Christmas, we'll just do it the 27th or the 28th instead of on the 25th. And if you can loosen up about that and if you can get your families to loosen up about that, that would be very helpful. I know when we first started out, it was, oh, John works on Christmas. Oh, John works on Thanksgiving. And it was like, yeah, and I can't help it. It's not like they can ask for it off. So we just got used to, yes, he, he's working or, uh, you know, for kids concerts or soccer games or parent teacher conferences or church events, they're working. There's nothing you can do about it unless it's that important that they have to ask off. And then I suggest you turn in that request for time off as soon as possible. So that's just another thing I was thinking of is birthdays, holidays, events, please don't like hold on to them so tight that it puts a wedge in your marriage. Reschedule when you can. Do what you can alone. You can extend birthdays. You can have a week-long birthday just to make it work. You can make Christmas last all week, you know. That is how we handle holidays and it's much easier when you can get you and the kids and the extended family on board as soon as possible. That way no one is negative about it. I already talked about when they don't get home on time, don't hold that against them. My husband works overtime after discussing it with me and we could use the pay, so it's okay. But he's not taking every overtime shift he can to get away from home. So, but usually they're not going just to get away from you when they go in on their days off. So I basically covered the overtime part in the beginning, but that's really what I wanted to stress is that the hours suck. Working late because of a call sucks. Having a 10 hour shift turn into a 14 or 16 hour shift sucks. The overtime pay, depending on your department sucks like it just this career is a very hard one to be married to or to be in a relationship with so it just it takes a lot of getting used to and a lot of communication 
And that is it for this video. I hope I didn't make it too long. I hope I didn't ramble. I tried to stay on point. If you have any more like tidbits about the shifts and the times that I didn't cover, put them down in the comments because I'd love to see what I missed. And also any comments that you have, go ahead. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and please hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed if you think my channel might interest you in the future hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so that youtube will notify you so i hope this was helpful i hope it was kind of encouraging kind of insightful i'm sure every law enforcement spouse has something different to say but that is just my opinion and my advice take it or leave it i love you guys thank you for taking the time to watch this and i hope you have a fantastic rest of your day bye